morning, everyone. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our resurrected Savior and Lord. Amen. We are so glad that uh, you're here this morning. I am uh, pleased. Uh, what did Hubert Humphrey always say? I'm pleased as punch that, that all of you are here this morning to worship, whether you're here in a pew face-to-face, -face, in person, or whether you're joining us online, virtually, welcome to this service of worship. I do have a few announcements, and you may have others to share. First of all, uh, I hope that everyone will join us downstairs for uh, some fellowship time following our worship service this morning. Secondly, our diaconate board, I believe, is planning to meet next Sunday, uh, following worship. Then the Sunday after that, that's the 17th, if you're counting, we will have our annual meeting, our 155th annual meeting, following worship on September the 17th. Very important meeting, as were the other 154 meetings that preceded it, but this meeting is uh, important for all of us who love our church to attend. The next Sunday, the 24th, is our Fall Fellowship Meal. And uh, provided for your dining enjoyment will be ham, hot dogs, baked bean, green bean casserole, cheesy potatoes, and drinks. And we're inviting everyone else who attends to bring uh, a salad and or a dessert to, to share with the group. Again, the 24th, our fall fellowship meal. Now, do you have other announcements to share? Then let's begin our worship. Welcome, Judy. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, we enter your presence to remember and to rejoice. 
we come looking for your steadfast faithfulness and your loving care. May we be a people who seek reconciliation and genuine forgiveness with one another in remembrance and gratitude for your mercy and your grace, we pray. Amen. Morning has broken. It's a beautiful morning today. Let's stand and sing about it. just a couple of verses, really, from Matthew's Gospel, where we're going to find Jesus speaking. Jesus told another parable. And we love his parables, don't we? Even when we don't quite understand everything about them. You can imagine how those twelve disciples must have felt listening to their Lord and teacher, and then scratching their heads when Jesus might have looked away from them. Anyway, Jesus told another parable. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in a field. And though it is the smallest of all the seeds, when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants, and it becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Words from our still speaking God. Thanks be to God. We're blessed this morning, Judy providing us a musical moment.
Yes, 
by George, well, really probably by Yahweh, I think we're getting close. The Holy Bible, a love story. Let's pray, and then we'll explore a little more deeply. words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight and hearing, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Mustard seeds, love, hope, faith. These are our touchstones this morning. Now, I've shared Matthew's version of the mustard seed where we find Jesus likening the potential in this tiny, tiny seed to the grandeur of the kingdom of heaven. Let me share Luke's version. Jesus, in Luke's version, writes, The disciples said to the Lord Jesus, Increase our faith. And Jesus replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, for example, be uprooted, plant yourself in the sea, and it will obey you. <laughs> Other places in the biblical story, we find wonderful passages of faith in action. Abraham demonstrated great faith in God, leaving his land and traveling to a place that God would show them, that God promised to give to Abraham and his descendants. Speaking of God's promises to Abraham and those descendants, there weren't any descendants until God acted and Abraham had faith. And then the promise of children, lots and lots of children, became true. Children, as many as there are stars in the sky. Those first disciples, you remember them leaving their jobs and their families to follow this Son of the living God. And then recall the small but faithful brothers and sisters who risked their very lives in order to be the church of Jesus Christ. Those stories recorded in the book of the Acts. You're thinking, aren't you? You seem to be talking a lot about faith this morning, so why didn't you choose one of those earlier Bible subtitles, maybe like the one, uh, the Holy Bible, Testimonies of Faith? That seems to fit the biblical narrative more closely? And doesn't it find support in Jesus' parables about the mustard seed? And, and, and you're thinking further now. What about, what about that author of the letter to the Hebrews that speaks about faith? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. Now you're coming to the conclusion.
conclusion of your thoughts about my preaching message this morning, and you're thinking, come on, PD! You're making a good case for the Holy Bible. Testimonies of faith. <laughs> Don't you love it when I, I, I put words in, in your mind? <laughs> I, I, I And, and, well, you might be right. And I may be crazy. I even claimed testimonies of faith, subtitled, be close, but not quite. Of course, faith is vital to life and living. Of course, faith is coupled with hope, offers us a, a reason and purpose to wake up and get out of our beds in the morning. But, my dear siblings in Christ, it is love that makes faith and hope but joyous and valued. I know. Maybe we need a reminder straight from the Holy Bible. A love story. You'll recognize these words. If I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and, and if I have a faith that can move mountains or mulberry. but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. You see, love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not proud. Love does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. You see, love always protects, love always trusts, love always hopes, love always perseveres. Love never ends. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, at least when I was a child, I, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became Adults, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. But then we shall see face to face. 
face. Now we know in part, but then we shall know fully, just as we have been fully these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. We are called to love everyone, everyone, friends and family members, strangers and enemies, and it matters not whether the people look like us or talk like us or believe like us or live like us or even From the very beginning of time, God so loved and still loves and will love this world and all that has been, is, or will be. We are so blessed. This holy love is with us no matter what. And, and, and hear this. This amazing love is with us no matter what and no matter where we worship this amazing and loving God. You see that the Holy Bible, a love story, is everywhere. It's everywhere. Not just here at 408 South State Street in Hart, Michigan. This morning and all of our mornings and days and evenings and nights to come, let's just Celebrate God's love of us. God's love that goes with us no matter where we travel, no matter where we worship. just a, a few moments, we will experience, we will taste the symbols of love incarnate. Bread that symbolizes Jesus' broken body, the fruit of the vine that symbolizes Jesus' flowing blood. Both of which promise her 
forgiveness of our sins, fullness of grace, everlasting life, been one of my favorite hymns since my high school days. Be Thou My Vision is the title of it. And it was while the high school choir was practicing this to sing as an anthem in a service of worship that after that rehearsal the choir director uh, took me aside this won't come to any surprise to you. But the choir director took me aside and said, Dan, I, I know you love to sing, but perhaps you might want to consider utilizing your talents elsewhere in the church. Be thou my vision, Lord of my heart. It still is a favorite, and you will excuse me if I sing it loud and with gusto. Let's sing. Receive the compassion of our Lord. Come 
we break is the communion of the body of Christ. together 
and pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven,